Gargoyle. Ooh, Stay Puff Marshmallow Woman. Oh, God. Free range baboon. <laughs> Wait, what? Wait, wait. I'm recording, wait, wait. bitch. <laughs> God damn it, Dave. If anybody wants to know what Brandon was doing, uh, he's going through his Tinder matches. <laughs> yeah, and? I just find it gross that you would speak to them that way. If you're wondering what that other sound is, we're in my backyard and it's a little windy. Uh, we figured my living room kind of sounds like a bomb shelter, so we're moving it back here. So but, what, 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 what's wrong with uh, my, my Tinder matches? Well, you're the one who's describing them such in, in, in such a way. Uh, and when you yourself, what was that free range baboon? Yes. <laughs> Have you taken a look at yourself lately? Well, yeah, it's all right. I'm a guy. In the first, <laughs> what? So you're held to a different standard. Is that what you're saying? I, I'm absolutely held to a different standard. That's the way it works with dude. Sorry, oh, God. No, I, I didn't. I'm not the one who put that standard there. All right. Well, just for that, uh, you'll see where I'm going with this. Welcome to the third episode of the Valley Boys. Welcome, welcome. I am your host, Dave Weasel, sick as fuck, and still doing this. Uh, Join with me is my assistant who has been downgraded as of about uh, 60 seconds ago for his little chauvinistic uh, bullshit over there. What what I do to you, though? I didn't do anything to you. Yeah, but I, I, I don't like that. That doesn't sit well with me. Stave Puff Marshmallow Woman. And <laughs> I Well, I swear to God, she looks like either that or like, you know, she's like 20 pounds away from being the Michelin Man. Oh, Brandon. What? It's It's just ironic is all. Like... If you jumped into that pool, yes, and I have, uh, how much of that water would come out of it? Well, a whole hell of a lot. What, what, what's that got to do with the price of tea in China? <laughs> it's you're a hypocrite, is what I'm saying. Well, look, yeah, like you know, I'm not the greatest looking guy. I don't have the greatest looking body. I'm not Adonis or anything like that. But uh, it doesn't matter. I'm a dude. Like you, you can be an average to sub average looking dude, and when it comes to looks, like that doesn't matter. Dudes don't have to wear, like, prettiest clothes or throw on makeup or any of that stuff. That's just the way society's been forever and a day. I'm just part of it, buddy. Yeah, because of people like you. I have no control over anything. I have zero power to change anything in this society. Dave. Brandon. Dave. Brand damn it. I didn't say you said that, Dave. I didn't say you said I said that, Brandon. Lift hard, conservative. That's it. That's it. I'm doing it. Don't you dare fart my microphone. The Valley Boys. So we got a hypothetical question that came in. Somebody wants to know what would happen if Brandon and Dave got into a fist fight. Oh, that'd be an easy one. Like, if, A, it wouldn't technically be a fight because it hit you once and you're down. Well, I don't know about that. Uh... Not if I put myself down already. I've got the one signature move called the turtle, where I curl up in a ball and protect the vital organs and scream really loud. <laughs> all right. So well, then, we, all right. So I uh, can defeat you with that. All right. So I swing and I uh, miss because you, you pop your head down. And uh, uh, then what happens after that? Uh, you die really... of laughter. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I guess. Down man. you go, bitch. <laughs> also, you'd have to catch me. Look at these arms, dude. I got a uh, a six foot six wingspan for a dude who's five ten. Yeah. Six foot six, fingertip to fingertip. Yeah, that, that is a I, little weird. I, I'm like that dude from Street Fighter with the really long arms. What's yeah, his name? Uh, Dalzim. Dalzim. Yeah. From all the way across the room, I'm gonna Dalzim you one fist in each ball. Down you go. Jesus. Well, I, I tell you what, you better hope that that's the scenario because if I'm anywhere within like five feet of you, I'm gonna grab you and give you the old uh, Zangief. Pick you up in a spin pile, drive you into the ground. Bam. Over. Done. That's not the way to get promoted back to sidekick. Well, it doesn't seem to matter what I do. I'm going to get demoted anyway, so what the hell? Why not? That's right. Yeah, even if you don't do it to me, I have moral principles. Just like the principal in high school that suspends you for doing something off school property. Yeah. Uh, you are my property. Yeah, high, high school never changes. There's just a different asshole principal at different stages of your life. That's right, and that's me for you. God, thank, thank you, Dave. I don't know what I would do without your uh, strong moral compass to uh, keep me from uh, leading my own life astray. Thank you That's so right. much. Describing your Tinder matches in such a derogatory way, no matter how accurate, is still wrong. Just as long as you note that I am accurate. 
So we we haven't had an episode since uh, December twelfth because your family apparently loves you. You well, spent some time with them. How was Dirty Harry? Uh, Dirty Harry was awesome. I, I think part of it is because I was away from them for so long. They're like, all right, I think we can tolerate them for about a week, but we can't go much further past that. So it, it, it was it was good. Yeah, we we didn't do a whole lot. Just uh, got away, relaxed from the uh, rigors of everyday life, and. Uh, now I got to meet Dirty Harry finally. Yeah, and he advertised that he was going to be wearing his Trump hat in California, and he did. Yeah, yeah and how and, and how did uh, how did that work out? I uh, I mean, no one really cared, but yeah, I just thought it was fun. And he also had an American flag jacket, like the whole jacket was an American flag, stars uh, on one side, bars on the other. Dude, that patriotism right there, Captain America. So so how'd your interaction go though? Oh, it's great. Yeah. Dirty Harry? Yeah, he's cool. He started to tell some stories about uh, things he did in the Navy before he met your mom. Yeah. And he was like, oh, you know what? Uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah, that usually happens. He uh, sometimes forgets uh, time and place. <laughs> or his wife is sitting right there. Yeah, 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 the, the minor details. Well, I, I think it might have been because of some of the drugs he did in, uh, <laughs> before he met my mom when he was in the Navy, too. It's been known to happen. So you're just announcing that your dad did. Oh, whatever. They don't listen to the podcast. That's a rule, right? Don't yeah. listen to the, like the very first episode. We talked about your drug habits. Yeah. How you're an addict. Yeah. Well, I you did cocaine once. So uh, yeah, I did cocaine once. So I, yeah, in the eyes of, uh, eyes of many, I'm a, I'm a juvenile delinquent, a junkie. Yeah, pretty much. <clears throat> yeah. My, uh, yeah. Like he was in the Navy in the seventies, sixties, seventies, like everybody was doing drugs. Like, no one got in trouble for him. You get a slap on the wrist, you know, if you get caught. That that was, like, the worst thing that would happen. You get a little talking to, you get sent on your way, you might get the drugs confiscated. Of course, they didn't make it too far. You know, everybody did, was doing drugs back then. Did they do drug testing back then of any kind? Uh, like, when did they start testing for narcotics? I don't know, probably, like, the 80s or 90s. Yeah. You know, like, but, yeah, the 70s, they didn't give a shit. As long as you showed up on time to do your job and you did your job, that's all the shit they gave. Like, that, that was it. Damn. I know my brother, he works in the oil rigs uh, up in Fort McMurray, Alberta, Canada. Yeah. And they drug test you because they don't want you fucking around on the rigs on drugs. Well, sir, and I guarantee you at some point, like, some dude fell in, got his head crushed or hand crushed, and then, like, that was that was the end of it for everybody. The, the one story my dad did tell me is uh, that supposedly there was an incident on an aircraft carrier where a plane was coming in and... <clears throat> Something with the rigging was set up. Like, there's a little wire to catch the hooks on the back of the plane to slow them down, keep them from going off the carrier. And I guess something happened. Plane didn't get caught. A whole bunch of people died. Horrible accident. And uh, I guess they did drug test people on the ship, and they found out that a uh, significant portion of the crew had something in their system. I, I don't know what that something is, but it was something. So that was that was probably the uh, end of the age of innocence. <laughs> The U.S. military, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Your billions of dollars going towards uh, something. I didn't really do anything. I got sick over the like the last couple of days. Uh, New Year's Eve, I didn't want to drink. We just stayed at home. Yeah. I was hanging out with uh, baby mama and the baby. Baby mama decides to fart on me a bunch of times. Cause <laughs> she, I, now the tables are turned. <laughs> no, I, I don't do that. I don't fart on people. Gross. And I think that's what made me sick. Oh, you you got yourself a little pink eye along with uh, something else? Nah, it's just a cold, but Christ, it's the worst, man. When you wake up, it feels like a freight train hit you. And then I had to drive 50 miles today. Uh, but she was, uh, she wanted me to catch up with her drinking. And I was like, I'm just going to have a couple glasses of something. Nothing, nothing crazy. And she's like, no, drink or I'll fart on you. And then I was like, fine. So I'm trying to drink a little bit because I don't want to get farted on. Yeah. And then she's like, uh, chug, chug. And I'm like, stop that. That's <laughs> unnecessary. And then she just, she she aims her butt in my direction. And she's like, you better chug a lug, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> so n none of that helps when you get, when you're sick and you're drinking, you know? Yeah. But. Well, you normally have to pay extra to have them fart on you. So uh, that's actually a bonus. <laughs> That was my New Year's. I, I was outside smoking when when the decade flipped. 
And uh, I realized it because all the fireworks were going off, and I was like, oh, I guess this is it. Yeah, I, you remember when you're a kid, it's a big deal to, to count it down. You're watching it on TV at whatever party you're at. Oh, yeah. And everybody's into it. And then when you reach whatever, 30, it's different for everybody, but you reach an age where you're like, I stayed up past midnight for this. It pretty much, yeah, you realize how much sleep you've been missing out on now that your body actually rejects you for sleeping less than eight hours a night. Yeah. That's what's happening with me right now. That's why I'm so sick and complainy. Yeah, I I've, I have seen uh, corpses that look better than you do right now, actually. Yeah, My. but you, you can pretty much say that any any day. I've always I always look like a walking corpse, just exhausted and drinking three energy drinks. But this time we got whiskey. What did you pick up here? Uh, this is a Canadian Crest, and as you can see right on the bottle here, it uh, says authentic choice Canadian blend, and I think this. Uh, Oh, this guy, this used to be uh, endorsed by John James. Everyone knows who uh, John James is. Oh, John James from Canada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. everyone knows John James. As opposed to James John. That guy's a dick. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah, it totally. But, uh, yeah, that's how you know this is good. Uh, that and the fact it was uh, 554 a bottle. See, that's one thing you'll never see in Canada uh, is cheap liquor. This bottle, what is it? It's a 2 6. It'll cost you a minimum $26. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure half of that is turpentine. At least that's what it feels like when it's going down. I don't care. I'm drinking it. Yeah. I'm going to pop it open. H Happy New Year's, buddy. So how'd the Hawkeyes game go? Yeah, uh, they beat the shit out of USC, which was fantastic because uh, all, all, all the rich parents showed up, and, yeah, they were expecting USC to just walk all over, you know, the hicks from the sticks, and, yeah, they just ended up getting pounded. It was It, it was quite enjoyable. I uh, met up with a friend from from Winnipeg, just just real quick for a drink. He, right. Rory Jacob, shout out to that guy. Uh, we I met him at the hotel right beside the what's it called? It's right beside the Stable Center. Yeah, I was gonna say it looked like uh, Marriott. Yeah, it looked like it was downtown from the picture you sent. Yeah, and they had uh, uh, the Wisconsin Badgers there. The uh, oh oh the actual it's, team. Yeah, they had uh, the, yeah uh, for the Rose Bowl. Yeah, the welcome sign. Yeah. How'd they do? Uh, I think they lost. Bunch of shitheads. See, I don't give a fuck. Like, I, you know, football, Rose Bowl, whatever. Like, fo realistically, sports, it, it, it's a good reason for people to get together and, uh, you know, have an excuse for, like, three hours to start drinking. And, like, that's about it. Unless you're out in the field playing. Yeah, it's fun pastime, but that, that's about it. All right, we're going to take a quick break, and I'm going to drink some of this whiskey. Yeah. All right, we'll see you on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're back. I'm drunk. Yeah. It, it's 1.26 p.m. on a Wednesday. Responsible Dave there. Ah, yeah, whatever. We're in my backyard. <laughs> uh, hey. Well, I pushed pause. Brandon was telling, us, telling me a story about... Uh, how he went to school and he got spanked by campus security. They pulled his pants down and everything. Uh, tell that story again. Yeah. No, so I had a, a free form writing assignment from an English class. Write about anything you want. Doesn't fucking matter. And I'm like, okay, cool. So I can't even remember what subject that I, I wrote about. It was that insignificant, except for the fact that I, I wrote the word fuck twice in, in, in that exercise. So my dickhead English teacher decided uh, that that needed to be reported to the principal's office. So there was a day where, like, me and my parents, we get called into the principal's office over this shit uh, because I wrote fuck twice. And, in fact, while being chastised about this in front of my parents, the assistant principal said the word fuck in front of me to uh, just completely show what a hypocritical uh, hierarchical system there is. Of uh, <clears throat> He said the word fuck to you? Yeah, and right, right in front of me and my parents. Yeah, the the assistant. Well, he's saying you said fuck. That's no, no, no. He's, he's it, referencing it. He's not saying fuck you, Brandon. He no, but he didn't. The, the whole point is, I was there because I said the word fuck, not because I directed it towards anybody or that I was like screaming it out in the middle of the quad while people were going in between classes. I wrote it in a journal that was went to my English teacher. So the only people that knew that was in there up until that point was me and my English teacher, until he decided to be an asshole and then run to the fucking principal's office about it. 
But then the assistant principal, when he called me and my parents into the office, he used the word fuck right in front of me. So I'm I'm there being chastised for using for writing the word fuck in like the most non confrontational, angry sense I could possibly use the word. And then the assistant principal is saying fuck right in front of me. Yeah, you got to hold your microphone back a little bit because you're going like this. <laughs> That'll happen. <laughs> no, it's good. So we'll get to the part where he spanks you. Or did I make that up in my head? Uh, well, well I, I I don't know what weird fantasies you have going on in your head, but, uh, yeah, there's definitely no pants down or uh, hand to ass or anything like that. But, yeah, they, they were talking about, like, oh, well, yeah, usually something like this, you know, uh, it'd be some sort of, like, fine or violation like campus they had like camp the a campus fine. yeah they had a campus police officer there wanting to write me like a citation for like 25 dollars and i'm like for what well it teaches you about the real world uh yeah that you get fucked. wait you as a white boy went through that <laughs> I, well it, yeah and the only conceivable reason i i could possibly think of for getting in trouble for writing the word fuck twice is because it was like two three years after columbine and they're like oh fuck this is an early warning sign it's a white kid he wrote the word fuck like two weeks from now he's going to be shooting up the school that's the only thing i could possibly think of that's so, a bit of a stretch well it regardless so they uh they decided to uh, uh be assholes for for what reason i have no idea but it, it was the dumbest thing I was ever a part of in my entire life. Like, there were times where I got into fist fights with kids. And nothing fucking ever happened to anybody. Would I, they turtle up, though? Uh, no, no, we were both fat, so we were just uh, swinging away. But, it, yeah, like, the whole point of the thing, though, is uh, y y you operate within the confines of the system. You, you do what they ask you to do, and you still get in trouble. It's still like, implied you don't cuss in your writing how is it implied the teacher said you can write about anything you want so with, you just with went, no restrictions fuck 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 I wrote, fuck 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 there's something that, that's anything i want no i no i i use the word fuck twice for emphasis in my writing i didn't go on a swear storm you know anything like that like it was still like two full pages of other words that weren't profanity <clears throat> you okay you okay there buddy yeah, I tried to hold the microphone away. I'm going to chop this part out. <laughs> or maybe I won't just leave it in. <coughs> Fuck, dude. I hate being sick. And I hate being around you when I'm sick. And I hate being around you anytime. Well, you better uh, drink some more whiskey. It'll help uh, kill the pain. It does. You was not helping her smoke cigarettes. But... Uh, yeah. Dude, I'm so fucking white trash. Like if it's a good thing we don't do this on video, man. What do we got? Dayquil, energy drink, ashtray. I'm smoking, and a cup of soup. Cup of soup over there. You brought that. Yeah, well, That's it's because nice yeah, I, I care a uh, white trash, uh, holistic medicine. <laughs> white trash holistic medicine. Yeah, I like that. But did you see the? So he so he didn't spank you. Yeah, th there was yeah, there was no physical spanking, but oh. there, there were definitely threats made. They made it sound like I threatened to, you know, beat the shit out of somebody. Like, it, it was just completely innocuous. Like, it, I, you so probably I the word did a couple times. You probably did because you do that. You you are a confrontational motherfucker. <laughs> well, I, I I can be at at times when I need to be. Like, I don't make a regular habit of it, but uh, <clears throat> you're so easily agitated. Yeah. Yeah, that, that that I am. You have deep rooted anger issues. <laughs> <laughs> well, please, please, please go on, Doctor Weasel. Yeah. Oh God, I was fucking traumatized this week. I saw this thing called uh, "Don't Fuck with Cats." Okay, well that's that, that's probably a good idea. Cats are horrible. No, no, no. You know what it's about? It's a documentary. I, I, it's, spoiler: I don't give a fuck. I'm just going to tell you that what happens in it. If you don't want to hear it, if you plan are planning on watching it, I wouldn't recommend it, but skip ahead a little bit because I'm going to tell you what happens. So it's about this, uh, this fucking psychopath that puts these two kittens in a, in a vacuum sealed bag oh. and, he, and he kills them and he puts the video out. And, uh, so these people all over the world are trying to find out who this guy is, and they're looking at shit like the outlets, okay? They figured he's in North America. They found the vacuum he used, all this shit. Uh, 
and they're 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 starting to get on him. Like they, th- this big group of uh, I don't know what the hell they are bikers or veterans or something. They got involved and they they shared it with their massive Facebook following. So everybody's on it. Yeah, and they got it narrowed down. He's actually in Canada, and uh, they figure out who it is, and the fucker puts out another video. So, so wait, are all the crazy cat people in Canada or? What? No, 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 no. Th- okay. This is a cat murderer, dude. Yeah. This is a f- fucking cat murderer. And, you know, I was watching it. I was fine because they didn't show the, the vacuum bag, but they did show. He put out another video where he taped a cat to a a, a broom handle and put it in the bathtub. And you, they showed the cat being taped to the to the broom and his face, man. I've, I've, I'm not kidding. That was four nights ago. I've had nightmares about it every night. That well, poor fucking cat's face, just the look of desperation. He knew something was up, and it was it, it just traumatized me. But here's the thing about that. Yeah. Uh, again, like I said, spoiler. So around this time, some dude was sending out body parts to different political parties in Canada, <laughs> like a okay. foot, uh, and uh, other ones got uh, intercepted, but somebody sent the prime minister a foot. Is old Vince Lee uh, up to his old tricks again? Well, no, 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 not that guy. It was around that time, though. Oh it's God, just, <laughs> it, it's, it's in that it's in that time frame. It was that dude. He was the one, and and these people on the internet that were pissed off about the cats were one step ahead of the police. And they helped catch this motherfucker. Nice, but he he lured some guy in, cut him up, and was sending out uh, different body parts. Which with, with all these serial killer shows. The one thing that they all have in common, it seems like, is they they hurt animals, and that's a sign you're a fucking piece of shit. Yeah, pretty much. But th- here's the weird thing, though, when they were talking about the the dude getting cut up, I was like, oh, that's bad, you know, that's tragic. But the cat, I it, <laughs> yeah, well, because generally a guy's at least going to be able to fight back unless he gets like clocked over the head. But right, like, yeah. in no circumstances, the tiny little you know cat going to be able to defend itself from some fucking psycho like that. Right, and that is it is human nature because you got all these true crime podcasts where every week they're like, "So this horrible thing happened, and that horrible thing happened, and everybody listens to it." But if you had like an animal torture podcast where you just talked about different cases of that, no one would want to fucking hear that. Yeah, you listen for like about five minutes and like, all right, well, nope. I'm done with this. Nope, couldn't yep. do it. And that's yeah, I'm not. I, you fuck with animals, you're a piece of shit. Eating them's fine. I eat animals. It's great. <laughs> That's a hell of a segue. A nice steak, a fucking hamburger, yeah. some bacon. But they were bred for that purpose. But, how, like, torturing an animal for the pleasure, the sick pleasure uh, of watch, of, of dominating something, whatever they get out of it, Yeah. fuck you. Jesus Christ, man. Put them in jail forever. I don't give a shit. Yeah, yeah I'm on board with that. And then, and then, yeah, of course, the guy turns out to be... Uh, a murderer of humans and and he got caught he fled to germany and he got caught in an internet cafe reading a news article about himself huh uh fuck him fucking rotten hell you piece of shit yeah 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 usually uh usually people are uh fleeing from germany not too <laughs> jeez you you you're, you're getting your history lesson in yeah <laughs> Uh, yeah, this is an educational podcast in between your fart and your dick jokes. Like, you will learn something. <laughs> so, that was uh, that was my week. Traumatized. I can't stop thinking about that cat, dude. It messed me up. Yeah. And so, I made sure to, you know, I got two little kitties. I, gave, I made sure that they had tuna every night. and Like, wrapped up in a little blanket. Well, uh, yeah. yeah, a little heater next to them. Warm them. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, I do that anyway, but... No, like that always happens. Uh, you know, if like you're a parent, you hear about like a wave of uh, you know kidnappings in your neighborhood. You're always gonna hug your kids a little tighter. You know, make sure they uh, come in, uh, come inside a little earlier in the evening time. Like, right, it's just yeah, as dude. human nature. My dad does that. He he's a cop, and whenever he'd go to a car crash where a kid died, he. I'm, I'm not talking about my dad's business here. Yeah. You know, like, uh, but I, I'm pretty sure I can say this. He'd come into our mine and my brother's bedroom. Just to just to peek on us after dealing with that shit, you know. Yeah, and it it's like that, but with cats. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you see the Pope slapped a woman? Uh, yeah, or slapped her hand. Yeah, yeah, she's like grabbed at him, and then he was like 
trying to pull away, and then he was wincing in pain, and she still wouldn't let go. And uh, yeah. wincing in pain, I don't know if he was doing that. I think he was just annoyed. Well, I, either way, he still busted out the Pope pimp hand. Yeah, I got no problem with that. Back in my day, we got spanked by popes every day. Uh, yeah, but I, <laughs> but I think that was uh, for completely different reasons. <laughs> Yeah, but that video is hilarious, though. <laughs> well, you, you were being punished because you were a bad boy, but, uh, yeah. It, uh... Oh, this again, Boys Two Men, the choir group. <laughs> Anywho. Yeah, I would, uh, I'm down with a, with a Pope that slaps people like that. He, like, he went, he, he apologized for it, and he's talking about how you shouldn't, like, he's setting a bad example. That's uh, violence against women and all that, but... He's he's really just dealing with a crazy fan. I yeah, it's yeah, no different than the Beebs doing it. Yeah, and yes, I'm putting the Beebs up on the same level as Pope. The hell is the Beebs? The Beatles? No, 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 just the Beebs. Oh God. Yeah, it's the Beebs. Wow, dude, what is it? 2007. Yes. Yeah, yeah, we we've gone back in time 13 years. Isn't that the around the time the the Steelers won the Super Bowl? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. So those are your glory days, is what you're saying. Uh, yeah, somewhere around there, I guess. Yeah, I wasn't nearly as fat, and, uh, yeah, I can move a little faster. Yeah, you're so gross now. Well, yeah, I mean. So am I. Th- that's, I was going to say that's not much of a, uh, not much of a, uh, a- an insult. I was pretty gross back then, too. I've been consistently gross for, uh, yeah, about that, 10 years now. 10, 12, 30 years now. God, so what? Th- all right, so so we we've, uh, we've hit twenty twenty. Seems like the entire last decade has flown the fuck by. Like what? What did what did Dave Weasel's life look like in two thousand ten? Oh Jesus! Uh, it was before I was I I have I was I wasn't doing stand up yet. I was with this girl uh, for a few years. At that point, I was working at a music store, a job I had for. a several years at that point um it's funny i was in a band and the owner of the bar he's gonna be in town next week we're gonna try to do an episode with him and he'll tell so many fucking horrible stories about me uh because him and i are enemies right well He, he thinks i took a shit on his stage and that was around that time like that was 10 years ago he thinks i took a shit on his stage uh because because he decided not to pay me at the last minute and don't get me wrong i would do that but i didn't <laughs> yeah. oh, okay so yeah behavioral wise nothing's changed much in, in, in 10 years but we, but we have the we have the oh great- hey god to backpedal to backpedal <laughs> i would do it in in, in in principle like i'm okay with that idea i would never do that i would never take a shit on a stage like what the hell yeah. no i would i would never do that but i if someone else in the band did it i'd be like good but that didn't happen <laughs> Uh, so, so we have uh, we have the great battle set up for next week. Uh, Dave Weasel versus Dick Rivers. Ten yeah, years revisited. Guy. I make him pay off his debt bit by bit. Whenever he comes down, he buys a few rounds. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, that's from when you owed me 300 bucks is what we agreed on, which back then, you know, when you're bullshitting and bullshit bands, that's a lot of money. Yeah. And he fucking, God, everybody hates him, too. Whenever he comes down and I post about it on the Internet, I get messages from people. They're like, oh, don't hang out with that guy. He's such a piece of shit. Or th- they don't even say that. They're just like, here's a horror story about that guy, and I've never even met him. <laughs> it's funny. You think their reaction is like, oh, thank God it leaked. he's uh, 2,000 miles away from me, you know, at least for a few days. But, no, it's like just to email you to let, let you know what a piece of shit he is. Like, they're, they're allowing him to bother. And it's like, I know. I know he is. But, and he hasn't changed. Yeah. He's still the same fucking garbage human being he's always been. Uh, he used to be he he legit was the biggest radio DJ in at least Western Canada, if not all of Canada, very briefly. But uh, he was he was on Power ninety seven, the big radio station at the time. I think they're back up again actually, but in Winnipeg, and he w- he would make prank phone calls. He would say fucked up shit. He was Howard Stern kind of before Howard Stern. Everybody knew who he was. Okay, uh, but man, he's got some fucked up stories. Uh, and we're going to get to hear about some of those next week, huh? Yeah, I guess. God, that's so disappointing. Like, Dick Rivers will be the first guest on my podcast. Like, several years after I move out of that shithole. And the one guy that's coming on. Dude, I'd like to get Rory on. He lives in Seattle. So that's a dude. he was in another band that my old band used to play with. And he's the only person I know that lives in the States. Uh, he's up 
he's in Seattle, but he's he's been down here a couple times. Nice. Well, fuck it. Let's get him on. Yeah, get him on. But that's the thing. It's it's all just horror stories, you know. One time Dave did this. One time Dave dressed up like a woman, and his girlfriend dressed up like a man and drew on a mustache, and they got really drunk at New Year's and ruined it for everybody. Like it's that kind of shit, you know. Uh, no, that's that's pretty much how like the last ten years of my life has been alcohol off and on. <clears throat> the thing is, though, you you had nothing to attribute that to. I get to hide behind being a musician and being a stand-up comic. So they're like, oh, okay, that's what he does. Whereas you, they're like, oh, look what Brad is doing. Brad is taking a shit on a jogging path. Ugh. <laughs> Whereas if you were in a punk band doing that, they'd be like, oh, okay, yeah, that's what he does. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> that's what they do. It's got, yeah, it's got to go on your resume at some point. Oh, shit, you get some new shoes? Yeah, I did. Yeah, as, uh, yeah part of my uh, Christmas present. Oh, so your parents got them for you? Yeah, uh, you know, twenty dollars. Uh, you know, I didn't exactly splurge. Uh, you know, they didn't exactly splurge. They know? look athletic, like you're gonna do exercise in them. Do they not know you very well? You, you know what, Dave? Sometimes you're a fucking asshole, but then, then there's other times where you're a real piece of shit. Yeah, those are my two modes. I got a pair of athletic shoes too, and it's funny I wear them. Like I, I'm gonna go on a treadmill or something. I don't know. And obviously not. I got them for free. I was on a on a podcast that uh, they give you shit after. Oh yeah, <laughs> it was uh, Josh Wolf's podcast. He asked me beforehand. He's like, "So what size shoe are you?" I'm like, "Are these the kind of questions you're gonna be asked?" <laughs> <laughs> He's like, "No, no, we got some. Uh, we're sponsored by Puma. We're giving you shit." I'm like, "Oh okay." Oh yeah, fuck, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Speaking of podcasts, there was uh, there was one I was listening to recently. Uh, you, you know my interests. Uh, a little little out in left field there, and uh, uh, happened to be a history podcast uh, called History Blitz, and this particular episode was about cannibalism and how people used to use it as medicine. They they would actually wait 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 what cannibalism as medicine? Yeah, so like yeah, people used to believe like at various points in history, and they go like through, you know, during the episode they go through the. Like all the way back to gladiator times, times before that, where like gladiators, once they would kill their opponent, they would like go and drink their blood because they thought it would give them vitality and strength and uh, cure them of disease. And then as time progressed on, people would do everything from like, you know, doing the whole Jeffrey Dahmer thing and like basically turning people into beef jerky to like taking bones and grinding it down and mixing it in with like little herbal drinks for same thing you know people would always think if you if, if you would like that's so <clears throat> fucked up but did it, the real question is did it work because i'm so sick right now that i'll try just about anything uh well uh we can uh you know we can go find somebody a little later <laughs> and uh see if they won't miss an arm or a leg or something and uh see if we can't get you to perk right up buddy yeah dude it's if, if you can find anyone to donate an arm for 40 bucks it's los angeles I would, but yeah, everybody needs money for rent. Everyone's got a side hustle, even if it's the last one you do. Just wait outside the gas station and be like, "I'll fill up your tank for uh for for your pinky." <laughs> yeah, and uh, it probably wouldn't be the weirdest thing that you've experienced that day out here either. Yeah, it would be the weirdest proposition. You ever get uh um people asking you to watch movies? Like, hey, you want to come watch this piece of shit movie? We're doing a screening, and we'll, we'll pay you. They're like, how much? They're like, two bucks. They're like, fuck no. Uh, I, I get bombarded on Facebook with ads all the time for that shit. You know, come see brand new movie starring big time movie stars and a brand new comedy this Thursday at such and such theater. They'll stand right on the street and do it too, like the pre Facebook days. No shit. Yeah, I haven't ran into any of those people yet, but wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, I've had a pretty uneventful holiday as far as dumb Hollywood shit. Like, I haven't seen, I haven't encountered any crazy fucks or people bothering me or whatever. Like, and I, I'm not talking about homeless people. I mean, like, pretentious assholes. The, of all the people, in, like, the, they complain about the homeless people. Yeah. The worst type of person in L.A. is the aspiring whatever the fuck. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's. Uh... And oh, everybody's in that boat. Uh, yeah, everybody comes out here for something, and uh, unless you got a million dollars in the bank, that's you. If you're pursuing a career, no matter how far along you are, no matter how what you've sold, what you've been in, you're if you're still pursuing it. Yeah, it, yeah. and that's you. 
and that's me. And we're the most insufferable people there are. Well, yeah, I mean, we're always insufferable just because. But now, <laughs> now we're uh, now we're trying to do something with ourselves. That and Scientologists. <clears throat> well, I mean, that's not fair. I mean, Scientologists are in the same group as like you know animal torturers. Yeah, dude. I uh, I heard this story again. Could be an urban legend. I don't fucking know. I don't know where I heard it. Who told me? Whatever. So we'll say a friend of a friend of a friend of mine. All right. Was uh, taking pictures. So you already know it's probably not true of the Scientology building. Yeah. And then, uh, like from his car, like the, the huge compound over there in Hollywood. Yeah. That. <laughs> oh yeah. That big ass building. And then uh, uh, they were out there for an hour, and then. One of them came out and was putting flyers on cars, and it was a picture of that dude saying, like, warning pedophile. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Again, I don't know. If that, it's, when I say it out loud, I'm like, no, that's definitely not true. But that's uh, one of the rumors going around about them right now. Uh, my only experience with them, like, when I first moved here, uh, I did a little background acting work, which I, th- I think everybody in L.A., it's, like, mandatory. You have to do it for a year or something like that if you want to live here. But when I was standing in line to get registered, there was people out there, like, going down the line with their little propaganda. It's like, oh, have you thought about doing voiceover work? We'll come and, you know, work for the Scientology and blah, blah, blah. So they were just trying to recruit people that way. But, I mean, they didn't, like, request a newborn or you know, us to give them blood or anything like that. Well, they don't do it in the first pitch. The blood comes uh, like the third meeting. Hey, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you meet them downstairs in a dungeon, they strap you into a chair. Yep. Out of morbid curiosity, I, I used to live in Sherman Oaks, and there's a Scientology bookstore. Okay. And so I went in there just to see what the fuck. And the dude, he's like, uh, oh, yeah, have you thought about uh, checking it out? And I'm like, honestly, no, I just want to see what was in here. And he's like, yeah, a lot of people have the, the wrong idea about Scientology. And I was like, okay, so what's the right idea? And I know he's he's baiting me to, to add, and he's like, yeah, they, they talk about all this science fiction stuff. I'm like, well, don't you actually believe that? Don't you believe in the Mark Clarks? Yeah. yeah. And he's like, no. And then I was like, okay, he's lying. So I left, and I looked it up on my phone. And yeah, they do. They do. That's part of the religion, the Mark Clarks. Yeah, it, it, supposedly the universe is like 22 billion years old, and there's like Xandu or something like that. that that's the uh, it, yeah the god of Scientology or something like that. Not any crazier than any other religion, yeah. but it's still pretty fucking out there. Right. Don't don't try and tell me, oh, it's not like what you hear on TV or on the in the news or by Scientologists themselves or everybody. And right. I'm like, uh, that's a terrible pitch. Don't lie to me. Uh, right. Well, I mean, if you are going to you know, start a bullshit religion to build people out of their money, at least they had the right idea to come to Hollywood where people have tens of millions of dollars in their bank account. Those are the people they target. Yeah, that's why I was confused he was trying to recruit me. Nothing, <laughs> nothing about me screams. <laughs> right. Any of that. It's yeah, just yeah. like, oh, here's a dumpster pig. <laughs> <laughs> they have like 137 members, yet they're worth like you know billions of dollars or something. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, they have their own TV network. Yeah, I, yeah, and that, that was that was part of what they were like trying to recruit us for. You know, we're just out there like trying to make a little money, background acting, or should have people... fucking done it. That's how you, that's how you bust in, build a resume. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I guess it would have been the fast track to uh, getting into the Hollywood elite, but you know, why didn't you do it? Maybe it's not too late. Any Scientolo- any Scientologists out there uh, looking for a gross, bearded fuck? Uh, Brandon Collins is available. You could be like their mascot, you know. Uh, yeah, the uh, their uh, the bridge to the common man out there. It's like, yeah, look, it's not all a bunch of rich fucks. Look at this guy. <laughs> <laughs> you just sit there. You got like a, a burger in your hand, and you're like, yeah, yeah, common man. Sit sitting on a bike path and uh, oh yeah, Encino. taking this shit. Yeah. Is Encino or Tarzana? It, it, it was Encino. Yeah, we that was the very first thing we talked about on this podcast. So we're going to cut this a little short because I'm sick and we are recording another one in a couple of days. Uh, don't want to, I don't know, wear ourselves out or bore you to death. So we're just going to say good night from Reseda, California. I'm Dave Weasel. Brandon this is Collins. Brandon Collins, my assistant because he's a piece of shit. Good night. Night.